Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Welcome to the happy hour chat. You know, just to see what we'll have a little drink together. It's an incredibly long week, uh, a lot of news for us to catch up on here and just to kind of keep you guys in the loop. Uh, so we're going to be kind of moving around some different topics and some things I want to uh, hit on from, from throughout the week. So hopefully you guys have a glass or have something to drink. Cheers. Happy Friday. Um, and, you know, you know, they have a good uh, Memorial Day weekend here. So as you guys are jumping in, make sure you hit that like button, uh, you know, and, 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 and subscribe to the channel. Help us, you know, help us continue to grow, show us some love. Um, yeah, you know, just trying to trying to elevate the platform as much as we can here. So we'll have the chats going, you know, as well. What's going on, Nick? How you doing? Um, also, while we're while we're doing our intro, quick shout out to the sponsor, BUSR. See it on the screen, BUSR.com slash Fanatic, the official sports book, the official betting partner of Fanatic Perspective. Uh, you know, hit up that Sports 100 FP promo code. 100% free play match on all your initial deposits. Uh, some different specials going on on BOSR right now. Um, you know, obviously the Gold State Warriors advance the NBA Finals, and we have Heat Celtics game six tonight. So a lot of player prop bets going on there, um, as well as NHL hockey playoffs too. You can bet on, you know, just about anything. Reliable customer service. We love BOSR. Uh, so hit, hit them up. You know, uh, I had, you know, just different things I wanted to touch on this week um, from and I'll, I'll hit them in order because because everything is is worthy of mention, you know, the the Milton pickup from Iowa State, the schedule for the first three game game times or kickoff times, uh, which is a big point of conversation, obviously getting Dorsey today and Tyrese Hunter from the portal for basketball, a lot to touch on. Um, but mentally guys, I'll just be, be real with y'all. Like I said, you know, happy, you know, I got my drink here. got some Hennessy pure white. Mm, delicious. Um, the Uvalde, um, situation, you know, just my heart goes out to that, you know, to that community and everybody that was lost there. Uh, especially those of us who are residents here in the state of Texas, um, all across the world, I mean, there's children involved and, and I don't want to, I want this to be a escape and a release for a lot of people that are dealing with a lot of different things, but, um, it's just on my mind, on my heart. And it, it would be wrong of me not to address that. Um, and I had to step away cause sports really didn't matter. And it, I mean, it doesn't really matter right now. That's that situation is more important, but, um, you know, just everything that's going on there. So if you guys have any, um, things on your heart or, you know, uh, uh, you know, I know there's many different uh, fundraisers and those going on out there. Want to make sure the money is getting to the people it needs to get to, and helping these families and and these this community this devastation that's gone on. Um, so anything we can do, please hit, send me a DM. Uh, all my contact information is is all over Fanatic Perspective. So just hit us up there. But prayers and and everything to that community, um, and just our our country, we got, we all have to do better and all have to be held accountable, um, for, for, for protecting, you know, especially the people that can't protect themselves. So, um, just heartbreaking, but I want to, you know, get into this conversation here. Like I said, hopefully a little happy hour release, get your drink. Hopefully y'all let me know in the chat what you got drinking or if, if you're just chilling or if you're listening to me on your way home from work. Um, and if you have any cool plans for Memorial day, um, first thing I wanted to get to, and I'm gonna actually bring this up here. So, are we still are we still upset about the 11 o'clock kickoff that we knew was coming against Bama? And you see how they squished us with the uh, two LHN night games with Monroe and UTSA. Y'all, let me know how you feel about that. Um, I, I, at this point, we definitely knew it was coming. We want to be, you know, and, and I think we have to understand what people, you know, prime time and why this happens. Right. And this is part of the reason why Texas is, you know, looking to get to the SEC and, you know, just our frustration with some of these kickoff times as fans. We've talked about this a lot as fans. 
Um, from a player and a coach's standpoint, I agree with Coach Sark and his his mentality of, we, you know, we're here to whoop ass at any time of day. That that needs to be their mentality. It doesn't matter to us. Um, for the players, it shouldn't matter to them. Now, for us as fans, especially those of us who are going to the game, um, we that that time of year in Austin, Texas, in Central Texas, high noon, midday, hydration, 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 right? Um, you know, got your sunblock, the whole bit. Like it is going to be. Now anything can happen, right? We could have a, all of a sudden nothing's wrong and, and it's seventy five degrees. But if it's anything like it was last year, in that time slot, that's you know those of us who are going to the game, those of us who are tailgating, all those type of things, it just sucks. Like we wanted to have the same type of experience that we had with LSU um, back in twenty nineteen when LSU came to Austin. It was a night game, um, still ridiculously hot, but you know we kind of got to. As fans, hit me up if you were if you guys were there, if you were at the game or if you tailgated that day um, downtown. It was awesome, right? And and you know, really got to feel the build up like it was a like a heavyweight fight. And so when you have an eleven a.m. game, you don't really get that that vibe, especially considering the time zones we're in. I've always been a big person of like the eleven a.m. stuff. I get it for Ohio State, Michigan, and teams that are in different regions um, or some of the East coast teams, if you will. But for, for us um, and Bama um, with this being such an anticipated game, you know, it's disappointing to have an 11 AM kickoff. It's disappointing for me going to the game where it's like, damn, I got to be rubbing the crust out of my eye at the tailgate. Uh, I'm still going to turn up, but it's going to be tough. So um, yeah. Y'all, let me know how you feel about about the early, uh, the early, the early kickoff, the big noon kickoff for for Fox. Now, those of you watching at home, you know, right out, right off the bat, you get to get it knocked out right at the beginning of the day. So you'll get Joel Klatt, you'll get um, uh, uh, my boy from Howard, uh, Gus Johnson, the whole crew. You know, the big noon kickoff folks. So it's what they've been on. They put everything, they put all their chips in on Texas, Alabama. Who wouldn't? Um, and for those who don't understand like the TV aspect of it, apparently their ratings and y'all can correct me if you're, if I'm wrong, but the ratings work in terms of, they draw their biggest numbers at that time slot at the 11 AM or, or if you're on the East coast noon time slot, then it's the night games. Then it's the midday games in terms of where the bigger, the biggest ratings come from. So, um, definitely want to be at night, especially you know, the, the time of the, the region that we're in and, and time we're playing, but um, looking at everybody's here, how the hell they give UTSA. Yeah. But it's on LHN. It's not, even, it's UTSA is on LHN. Uh, Monroe is on LHN. I'm telling y'all right now, make sure you have that hydration. Make sure you have your sun block. I saw a lot of y'all make fatal mistakes uh, uh, last year. And, you know, we talk about, like, the, the EMT people and whatnot. Whew. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. You know, God bless them and the hard work they do to keep us safe because um, a lot of people dropping like flies last year. I have an idea. Live stream, fanatic, perspective, pregame show meetup. That'd be pretty cool. Got to have somebody help us produce that. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a money thing, and it's in these TV contracts and whatnot, and um, sucks. It sucks. I don't. What's the what's the? Uh, let me look this up real quick. A few things I need to bring up. So, you know, if we're talking if we're talking schedule right now. Why couldn't they compete against the ESPN game that night? Is who is who is that night? Isn't it like is it what AM and Miami or who's I need to look this up because I'm I'm also I 
I I was hoping they would do like when we played uh, USC home and home a few years ago where we got to be at. Okay, let's see here. September 10th. I'm just I'm just looking up what what no the no that's yeah that's not even the week of AM I excuse me. So who's that night? That is USC and Stanford. Really? USC and Stanford and then on who's on CBS? Yeah, you know, it would be we would be up against USC Stanford. That's tough. So the biggest game that weekend is at eleven a.m. Because <laughs> the rest of these week two is kind of light across the board. Now that I'm really looking at this, I mean Houston Tech will be good that afternoon. Appalachian State's playing a And M that day. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's a it's really a light day. There's no reason why Texas and Alabama shouldn't be that night game instead of starting the day out. That now now that I'm really looking at what the, the rest of these games, it makes no sense to me. Other than they draw their money in that that eleven AM spot. So sucks for sucks for us as fans. For the most part. I know people are throwing around petitions and all sorts of stuff, but at the end of the day, guys like coach shark said no matter what time of the day it is we got to bring that smoke to bama and play our best football to, to 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 have a chance to beat them so um the next topic i want to move on to because we're going to kind of go through here uh on the hour uh coach sarkeesian i give him credit when he's been making the circles he talked about hey from a portal from a need perspective asked by media I need to get a receiver. I need to get a linebacker. Now, we spent a lot of time on this channel in particular talking about the Jordan Addison recruitment, the importance of it, um, why it was good to go after and why it was great to go pursue one of the best players in college football. Obviously, he lands at USC. But um, we really liked the fact that he was going after it. And also, from a number standpoint, I broke down the numbers a few videos ago. It is. It was still a need. So getting Milton, Tariq Milton from – uh, Iowa State, who's a veteran receiver in the conference, one of the better players, um, you know, went healthy a few years ago for Iowa State, really, especially before Hutchinson came on for them at receiver. And we know with that Iowa State attack, they were really run centric behind Brees Hall and also, well, as well as getting the ball to their tight ends. You know, Brock Purdy was up and down. You know, Milton's had some 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 injuries and whatnot, but um he's a guy who's played a lot of games in the big 12 lots of speed florida kid that can run and a guy that also can help us on special teams in the kick return game so a lot of versatility there uh, that he offers us i expect him to provide us some depth and be backing up jordan whittington so right right off the bat the concern about jordan whittington's health and you know just the depth of the room a lot of guys that we hope are going to be participants in fall camp who, you know, guys like Troy, Mary and Jay and Alexis that are, you know, you can't qu count on their health. Jordan Winnington's still questionable health. So adding another guy in the mix, this depth is very, very important. And I appreciate Sark doing what he said he was going to do. Um, and that's a guy, my biggest thing is, and I've been consistent in saying this, when we substitute and you have different folks coming into the game, I want the ability to capitalize on what the defense is, is giving me and not letting them off the hook to cheat because all I have is Xavier Worthy out there and they can cheat off the other guys. When I have somebody like Mo, when I have somebody like uh, uh, Ajayi Hall, you have to play me honest. You have to play me straight up. You can't just, you know, the, while there may be, you know, some of the grades came out last week and, and I think some people were kind of surprised that, Take what you want from pro football focus, but Jordan Whittington actually graded out technically as the highest graded receiver last year from pro football focus, even over Xavier Worthy from an overall grade perspective. 
obviously played a lot less, but you don't want there to be this awful drop off where people can cheat when guys have to get rest or just normal rotation stuff. Want to keep that 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 pressure going. What's good, Isaac? I see you in here. What you got? Millen has some nice speed to him, Marion. There to develop him. It's gonna make this offense so nasty long haul. Absolutely. Uh, Brennan Marion's kicking ass. Um, nothing but great things that we're hearing on the recruiting trail. What he's already done with this room, how they've already really transformed the, the receiver room. I mean, think about look at the the receiver room going into last season even with Xavier Worthy coming out of the portal from Michigan and look at look at the receiver room now and how excited people are about just the upgrade of speed in the room. Brendan Thompson will be here on campus coming in. One of the he's right off the bat, Brendan Thompson is going to be one of the fastest players in college football. And the thing, the cool thing about this is even guys like Brennan, um, you know, some of these other guys, you know, however they use Savion Red, uh, but Brennan in particular, I don't have to put pressure on him to, you know, unless guys just start dropping, 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 I can have more of a package for Brennan. I can have him play special teams. I can have him do jet sweep stuff. Like I can, I can bring him along at his pace, but still use his speed because I have all these assets here, right? It's more of a luxury than an absolute need. We've been using our freshmen, even Xavier Worthy last year, now it worked out for us, but we've been using them out of need for so long. And to have a luxury there, a player, a weapon like that, but he, you know, help him, you know, kind of round out those edges and develop, but also still be a, a contributor in some way. I don't know, you know, how much, but that helps. So, they th this was a great hit for for Sark. He said two positions. He said receiver and linebacker. We got to get one more, and he did both. He did both. So we get the transfer. Uh, Demonte Tucker Dur Dorsey. So you know I love the the three names DTD. Um, so we get him out of the portal. Philly more you know need there at linebacker. Yes, we like Overshone. Yes, we like Jalen Ford. Yes, we like David Benda. You know, Devin Richardson, all these guys, uh, but adding some competition to the mix, somebody with some production at the FCS level and pushing that room across the board. Great stuff. We need it. We need it. And the coach said that he was going to go get that. Let's go get that. Um, yep. While you guys are in here, make sure you hit that like button. Um, just a little happy hour to chat, chit chat with y'all. Nothing, nothing crazy. I'm going to hit these comments. Yep. Isaac, the, that's that's the key here, right? Depth is is great. I mean, but depth is also like, well, I have a scholarship guy here that, that can play. But it's different when I'm putting somebody in a game where, yeah, he's the backup, but he's running 4-3. Yeah, he's the backup, but he can take the top off, right? Like, you can't just all of a sudden cheat off of, you know, Nair, because Nair is out because of Jai Hall's in, right? Like, these are guys, and we know they're going to be A1, you know, ready to play. That's one thing I really do trust with Brennan Marion. That's one thing I trust with Sark in this offense. If they can get the production they got out of last year's group, what are they going to get out of this year's group? I think that's how we have to start looking at it. Randall Jackson said, what I love about what this staff is doing with the players they compiled so far is not only do they have immediate talent, but they have long-term talent as well. Jai Hall is going to be a stud within two years. That's that's a great point. Jai Hall, you know, yeah, we want him to compete and, and you know, the whole bit. But even if it's a slower developing aspect, similar to what I just talked about with Brendan Thompson, that's okay. Because of the long, you know, Isaiah Nayor could could come out here and average 20, 25 yards a catch again, and, and the NFL says, hey, we, we, we cover for that dude, right? Or, you know, after this year, Xavier Worthy would be draft eligible next, next season. So that's how you start to build up, you know, that, that pipeline and whatnot. And also the guys that are coming in 
um, that they're looking at for 2023. I think we're going to have a, a pretty heavy receiver class coming in, potentially four or five people from 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 just some of the the, the folks that I listen to and, and and have heard. So just that 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 pipeline of talent. Not everybody's going to stick. There's there's always going to be some turnover in the room. But my thing is, you got people that can run. All these dudes we're talking about. There's not one person I've mentioned, even with the starting group, whether it's Xavier, whether it's Jordan, whether it's Isaiah Nay or Ajay, everybody can run in the room. And I haven't been able to say when I'm talking about running, I'm talking about like they are explosive, take the top off, can run away from people. I'm talking about RPO slant. He can take that to the house, break off the safety. He's gone. Break off, a, you know, somebody, you know, make a man miss an open field off a bubble. He's gone. We're not talking about just all deep shots. The crossers, the deep post, you know, all that stuff is sexy. I agree. Especially, you know, with, with somebody like a Quinn Ewers back there, um, you know, with his type of arm talent or even Hunter Carr with his with, with his abilities or, or, or Malik Murphy with his abilities. We have all these guys that have terrific arm talent. But the fact that I can throw a freaking slant to somebody and they can go 80 and I have a bunch of those guys on my team now, that's really encouraging for me. Yeah, this group is this group is silly, man. With just just how these guys. T- yeah. Uh, could Milton could Milton return? Do you mean return kicks or? return after next season all these COVID COVID years got me twisted I know Milton was on the team because I remember doing a uh, a video on him not on him particular but when we were scouting Iowa State I think 2018 or 2019 and he was out there um, and that was somebody where I was like hey you know Brock Purdy will, will look to take the top off and, and go deep to to him and you saw you've seen him burn Oklahoma you've seen him burn us there uh, when he burned us that was on a, a reverse or double pass I should say but, you know, you've seen him, you know, Baylor, good teams in this conference where he's just, you know, 10, 15 yards behind people. But, yeah, he gives us return experience as well, which is really key because there were several times last year where we had, like, Xavier Worthy have to go out for punt return or whoever because defense is, you know, D- Deshaun Jameson just made a tackle and he sprinted downfield 20 yards and he's aghast. So he can't really flip back around and do punt return the very next play. So it's important to have different guys, especially for punt return, they're ready to go. If Sean Jamison, you know, is is actively playing defense on those snaps before, it's some of those those small things within the game that a lot of us don't consider. Everybody in the chat, I appreciate y'all in here listening, uh, enjoying happy hour. Let me know if you have a drink like I do. Yep, Chuck, stretch the field. Amen. And and the the other thing I you know we need need to key in on. I've I've heard people say this repeatedly, um, whether it's Twitter Spaces or, or message boards or whatever. Why aren't we getting guys on the defensive line? Why aren't we getting guys in the portal on the offensive line? Blah blah blah. Guys, the those those type of caliber of players that we're looking for. O'Shawn Mathis was the only one that was worth pursuing like that. I mean, they do their, they do their, their research and whatnot. Offensive linemen, you know, once guys, some guys even jump back in, go back to their school. Like you saw the young man at uh, Mims at Georgia. So it's, you, you have to be aware and cognizant of what's available to you and not just adding more Jags, you know, Jags, just, just another guy. Um, if you know, it's rare, you know, the success we had with Calvin Anderson out of Rice, who was two time all conference and was a plug and play for us. It's rare that you get those type of dudes in the portal. So at this point, we got to roll with the guys we have, the freshmen coming in, let those guys develop, go through the growing pains, enjoy the journey, the ups and the downs. And let them grow with the quarterback who's going to be young, regardless of who's playing, 
ups and downs, enjoying the process. But my biggest thing is I have people at least where I can get them the ball quickly in space and they can go make something happen. We don't have to just wait all the time, set a step, drop, you know, sit in the pocket, boom, boom, boom. Because some of those things aren't going to be available to us. And some of this stuff, like whether it's screen game, whether it's, you know, just getting people the ball in space, some of that at times, depending on the opponent, they may be giving us issues. Some of that stuff's going to help be our run game. That could be Bijan out there too. I saw somebody brought, brought up Bijan or, or Keelan Robinson or some of the other guys. Like we have to be mindful of the ups and the downs and the growth that we're going to see from this group over the course of the season. But at least I got people that can run and break something off and make something happen. I have somebody that can catch it in space, boom, cut it up field. We out of here. It's been a while since we had that type of explosiveness at Texas and a whole group, let alone, you know, just a couple guys. Let me catch up on the chat. Thank you, Jenna. Yeah, you guys hit the like button while you're in here. Um, yeah, we got to we gotta trust the lines. Now, the defensive line is going to be a little different because you have some people there. It's more how you utilize your interior guys because you have a lot of interior guys that can play. It's just a matter of consistency and them being in the best possible shape. But, you know, where are we going to get that rush from? Are we going to, you know, be serious about stopping the run this year? Are we going to be serious about stopping outside zone, stretch, wide zone, all those things that that people used against us last year to just absolutely destroy us? So I think that's a little bit different versus we know we have a lot of talent on the offensive line coming in, but, you know, we're going to have to cycle through. So Isaac, that's the other that's the other thing. You know, Sark talks a lot about the coaches being developers. Um, and I think that's a big aspect in terms of a lot of players' growth on this team physically, mentally, and how and if they're playing faster. You know, is if Jeff Choate's a developer, like they say he is, or or like they promoted, then my inside linebackers should take a step forward this year, regardless of what's in front of them with the defensive line. You know, Blake Gideon and, and, and Joseph back there are secondary with them reshuffling people with the influence of Gary Patterson. All these guys sh should be better development wise, playing faster, playing with better communication, being able to, to just do more in terms of the defensive playbook. Quite frankly, if we're going to stay with continuity, then Theoretically, you should already understand what we're trying to do, and now we can build off of that. So these are some of the things I'm looking to see in terms of development because the NFL, you know, yeah, physical, tape, all that, but it's also what you got going on upstairs and how smart we're, we're, we're playing. I want us to at least look like we're a smart football team like next year. What's up, Texas Homer? Guys, if y'all haven't seen – uh, he, he dropped a video a couple days ago on the last decade of Texas football. Really, really good watch. It's only 15 minutes. Please, please, please go check that video out. That's a must watch. Um, very insightful stuff. He hit on a lot of the culture elements we've talked about for, for many years. Um, but, you know, he did it in a very, very organized way. But also ended the video with some hope. And what good looks like if we want to turn things around. So please go to Texas Homer, subscribe. Make sure you check out that video, um, that history lesson, if you will. Many of us are familiar with it, but um, a lot of people run with several narratives of why we've been down. And as Homer said in this video, it's very nuanced. It's layered. It's a lot of things that, that contribute to that. So we have to understand those things, understand those shortcomings, and that gives us the path to be able to fix it, hopefully with somebody like Steve Sarkeesian. Um, I don't think it's going to be a stack. I think we will see more 335, but I don't think it's going to be like the, when I think of a 335 stack, I think of like when, uh, um, what's his name? 
from the uh, from the Panthers. Um, his face is in my mind, and I'm I'm forgetting it. Matt Rule, when Matt Rule um, was there with uh, was it Phil or Coach Phil? They they ran theirs was more like a three three five stack, and what Charlie Strong was doing way back in the day initially was more like that. I don't see us doing that. I think it's going to be a three three five alignment, but you're going to see four people at the line of scrimmage. It's just that the three guys that are going to be there are going to be bigger guys that are more interior players, but you'll have somebody over the tackle on the outside and you'll have somebody else standing up. No, Matt Rule is who I was, I was thinking about. But he took his defensive coordinator there, but they were running like a true like three three five. but their guys could actually – run it correctly and they were built for it um we have to do whatever we can with this scheme this year that fits with what the players with the personnel we have and not putting people in a position where we're taking you know the anthony cooks off the field because we're trying to plug in and do all that other stuff we want to have our best 11 out there we want to make sure it's aligned correctly and there's an emphasis on stopping the run. I'm going to be consistent in saying that. Jenna, thanks for putting the link in there for, for the Homer video. Yeah, you definitely need to go check that out. Is PK doomed either way? Hmm. You know, I have my concerns when this first happened about this very thing. But at the end of the day, um, with Sark's influence, and I think there's actually true understanding, you know, even down from Chris Del Conte, at this point, we just want to be good. <laughs> I don't care who gets the credit. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um also depends on how it looks. I mean, we know we know enough about PK. It's not like PK is a bum. He's not a rando. He sent. He's been one of the most successful defensive coordinators of all of college football. We know what he did at Washington. We know the guys he sent to the league, and we know there's there's traits of that that you'll see from his defenses when the, when things start rolling. So we'll know if oh, okay, this is what it's this is what it spar- starts to ramp like. This is what it starts to look like. And the thing is. Philosophically, Gary, especially being more of a secondary guy um, and some of the things he teaches, especially about, hey, I want everybody on the field to be able to play man coverage or be, be able to pick somebody up and and be, you know, be even across the, the field, so to speak, that aligns. So at this point, I mean, if, if we needed the assist, we needed the assist. This was a tough turnaround to begin with that I think we all underestimated. So now if it, if we come out and it's the same old, same old, and people are still running the ball and, and, and breaking big plays off in the second half and we can't get off the field and we're not getting turnovers and guys aren't communicating, then yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is. You know, this is still a results oriented business. We gotta be real with ourselves about that, but I'm not down on PK. And I will give PK his flowers if I see those traits that lead to success or that lead to improvement. Because realistically, with what I know we have on defense and I know some of the guys' habits, I know what guys do when, you know, they're tired or they're confused, how they look, some of the bad habits they go to. It's not their fault. I mean, that's what's, that's just the way things have been the last few years. So, those are all factors that this coaching staff, that's why I talked about development earlier. How do we overcome those things and get that out of their system? Hey, if you have a 50th ranked defense, you're above average. You throw some turnovers in there, now we're cooking, especially with what we think that this offense can be. We just talked about all the speed. Even with the growth the growing pains of the quarterback and the offensive line. We know we got with the weapons, running back, receiver, tight end. We know we got weapons. 
Can we put it all together? What are y'all talking about mindset? Uh, Jenna said, believe me, there's some of the booster mindset. I don't know. I want to see that. Hey, but that's also, that's, a, that's, that's that mentality. Um, and the other thing too is back then, we had guys holding people accountable. Um, we keep, I, I, we use the example over and over again because that's what greatness looked like was N'Kobe Dean checking uh, Channing Tindall in the national championship game in the red zone and, and he's correcting him on a coverage. And, but that's championship level accountability. Hey, we don't need to go to the sidelines to fix the, the mistake or to get on the same page because we're passionate about this. We're stuck. We, we've studied. We know what the defense is supposed to look like. Let's fix it. That's where leadership comes in. But to Sark's point, yo, I want leaders. I want it to be player-led leaders, but y'all need to be balling too. Ain't nobody trying to listen to somebody that's average or is also making mistakes, but you over here cussing me out about blowing a coverage. So that's where some of this comes from too. We got to have people balling that are also holding people accountable. And, and when I say ball, and I mean like you're executing what the coaches are asking of you every time you're out there. I'm not saying you're the best player in the world or anything like that. But what I am saying is you understand your assignment. You can you know teach the teacher, so to speak, and you can apply that and share that with your teammates. That's where that energy can come in and really help this football team because we haven't seen any of that in years. These are some good questions, though, in terms of, um, you know, the staff and just what what's there to overcome. Um, Roshan, you know, that's a great example. It's a great example. Want to have those guys on defense. I would love to see. I don't know his personality. I don't I don't know the brother, but I would love to see somebody like Anthony Cook step up. I'm not saying be a captain or anything, but just, you know, be that person that is helping communicate with guys. Um, the amount of football he's played, he's played a lot of football now. He's seen a lot and he's been through a lot. And I felt like for the most part, when he was in the games last year, he knew what he was doing at least and was effective in how he was being used. Those are the type of people I want to see step up and start to use their voice to say, Hey, you need to back up three yards or, hey, he's coming across. Hey, I got him coming off this pick that they're about to run because we've done our film study. They're about to run a pick. Like there's there's certain things, you know, certain tells where, you know, we can help ourselves. Offensively as well, by the way, um, this, is another, this is another thing. So we talk about how bad the offensive line played last year. From a pass pro standpoint, sacks aren't just on the offensive line. Sacks are a QB stat, an offensive line stat. Sometimes even whether it's a tight end that's in there or running back where they may go to the wrong side or they may not chip who they're supposed to chip or they may release before they're supposed to. There's a lot of, of nuance that goes into that. Um, and I know for a fact we had issues last year also with – how the, some of the protections got set by whether it was Casey Thompson or Hudson Card or some of the running backs that were in there where we had some, you know, some errors there in terms of pass blocking. So we can't just put everything on, oh, the offensive line was trash. They struggled. There's, there's tapes to tape. But what I'm saying is when you have somebody back there and that's, that's something you were going to have to anticipate. Like I, if Quinn Ewers is back there, I do think he can be tricked early in his football career 
at maybe seeing a blitz and maybe checking or moving the line this way. And next thing you know, they're coming the other way. Like there, there's, there's little things like that, that we may look at casually and say, Oh man, the offensive line sucks, man. Like they just gave that up, but it's really more of, well, this person communicated this to us or didn't communicate this to us. And we responded based upon the original call. So we have to understand there are so many elements of communication, even within our own offense as well. So it goes on, on both sides of the ball, things to understand. Um, and, and, and that's why I'm saying this is going to be a journey. I think it's going to be a fun journey because you have a lot of exciting talent that I don't think it's going to take super long for them to really hit their stride and seeing some of the, the rapport amongst them, even right now, um, I like the group. I like the talent. I like their energy. But there's going to be some things like you don't think that, you know, Pete Golding and, and Saban and all of them are going to come out there that, you know, is going to make anybody at the line scrimmage go WTF at some points. There's the, and, 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 and then sometimes it could be more straight up stuff. But we have to be mindful of, of some of those things. I'm just trying to set proper expectation here. Um, you know, with, with certain things. I'm encouraged by Keandre's shape. Um, I, I, I honestly thought in the spring he looked like he was in good football shape. I'm, I, that's one thing um, I saw, you know, Karen, Karen pointed out, and I agree with him. But it's now or never. All these older guys, Jamison, Overshone, Overshone for me, it's like, dude, do you want to do you want to be an NFL player? You have the body, you have the speed. Um, he has the wow stuff, but he doesn't have the consistency on tape. He doesn't have the consistency consistency on tape. Can you do the routine things and get good at the routine stuff? I'm not saying you got to be a perfect football player, but if we can at least trust you at that position to where you're doing the routine things on top of still giving us the splash stuff, then we good to go. But rent is due for some of these folks, even sweat. Sweat's been here a while now. Sweat's not a young, I don't consider Tavondre sweat, you know, a new guy. Alfred Collins is in a draft year. He can be drafted this year. It's time to, it's, it's, it's time. It's time. There's there's no more there's no more excuses. This isn't trying to speak ill of anybody, right? Like these are things we we say that if anytime I get to interact with anybody, I say it to their face, like it's time, bro. Let's eat. Let's get it. Let's get it. Y'all y'all know what's on the table. They they get feedback from people. At least if you're surrounded by, by people that are telling you the truth in your life. And not gassing you up and making you think that you balled out and when you didn't. But it's time. It's time to be consistent week to week. Not, oh, he 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 had this this interception against West Virginia, and then we don't see you for the next three or four weeks. It's gotta be week over week. That's the, those are the people getting drafted when they dogs week over week, home or away. And that goes for everybody on the team, not just some of the older guys, but even, you know, Xavier Worthy. Keep the party going, man. Xavier had some times with, with drops or he would have a 300-yard game or almost damn near 300-yard game, but then had one catch the next week. Consistency. That, that's for everybody on the team. Should help. Should definitely help. Um, my question is, what type of backer is he to the point of, is he the type now to where he really, really knows what he's doing and he can play so fast because he knows exactly where he's going and diagnosing and understanding the scheme that he can help make other players better, including his own self? That's that's a question I have that I, that I want to see. How much does the health help? How much does being immersed in the summer and going through all the practices help?
What's up? What's up, Chris? Horns behind enemy lines. Um, he made a great uh, spring vlog that you guys should go check out on his YouTube channel, as well as um, a Milton breakdown. So please go check out what, what he's got going on over there. We just have a little happy hour chit chat. I'm going to get to some hoops here in a second before I close. But um, now nah, we just chilling, bro. Isaac, you said you want to see Overshawn on edge. That's tough for me. I don't know how he would be able to scrape and, and play the run at that position. Lengthwise, I could see it. Um, just the way we play football I, and at this point of his career, I think that'd be tough. Yeah, continuity in the position coach definitely helps, definitely helps. Um, and that's something that Homer did a good job of touching on in his video as well, right, in terms of how many different position coaches you had at Texas, how many coordinators you have at Texas, how many scheme changes have we had at Texas. All of those things um, have, you know, quite frankly been detrimental to the players. It's called spade to spade. It's called spade to spade. So, uh, I have not talked. Uh, I have not talked baseball. Sounds like they're handling their business. Um, I haven't been as plugged in as, as I normally would like to. I wish I, I should have gone since I'm up here in Arlington. Um, but no, it was it was actually really cool listening to the baseball moms. Uh, Queenie hosted a spaces last week with uh, Faltini's mom. Um, Ivan's mom, and I think there was another. There was one other mom on there from the team, but it was a great. It was it was a great great chat. So, um, just seeing those folks on there was really really cool. Twenty dollars and go tomorrow. Might be in there. That might be the might be the move. Might be the move. Let's 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 go see about some. I went early when they played OU earlier in the season, so I might might head up there. April Frank April Finkley was uh for foot yep for football as well, represented justice. He could be that hybrid. Okay, so you talking about Dorsey, or are you talking about Overshone, Randall? Are you talking about Overshone? I need to get more into Dorsey's tape. I haven't really studied him a whole lot yet. Milton, I was really familiar with just because I've, you know, I've been plugged in with Iowa State for some time. Um, and speaking of Iowa State, we're going to get to Tyrese Hunter here at the end of this. But um, y'all talk to me about Dorsey. Do y'all think he's somebody that can crack the rotation? Do y'all think this is more of just feeling? I mean, either way, I'm cool with it because we need the depth. Um, or do you think he can? beat out guys like a David Benda, Jalen Ford, or, or Overshone. I need to, I, I haven't, I haven't studied him too much yet, but I'm happy that, you know, the, the spot got filled. What's up, Gray man? Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Definitely remember Jason Hall. Um, and he was a frustrating player for, for quite a bit here at Texas. And then at the end, uh, Todd Orlando and them really figured out how to really get him playing fast. Um, he played a lot in that lightning package as a hybrid, like, like gray man saying, um, I think if we, if we were still in that type of defense, absolutely. Um, it's going to be interesting, though, with with the five DBs, because we have Jade Barron 
plan. Like we have more true DBs now on the field. So I'm curious to see, um, you know, how that position is utilized. Like Overshone right now is still going to be looked at as just an, an actual weak side linebacker, in my opinion. You know, be fast, try to keep stuff off of him and let him just pursue the football, let him play a gap. That's one thing I, I would like to see more of that I think he does very well. Um, I actually think he's a he's a really good uh, blitzer on the inside and knows how to get at least underneath guards and, and utilize his speed. Um, we leveraged that at certain times last year, but we, we got away from it. Could be things they're they're thinking about over the summer. I don't think it's I don't think anything is I think when you're as bad as you were defensively last year, everything's on the table to consider in terms of improvement. Yeah, I might have to hit up the baseball game tomorrow. Appreciate the insight, Dodge Bear. And I might have to get my boy on here who really, really uh, has been following the team all year to provide his insights on the team. If y'all would enjoy that, yeah, that eight DB package was great until it became our base. Until it became you know, uh, Breck and Hager taking on three hundred pound people every play at the point of attack, and you know. It was it was dope on passing downs and and trying to get exotic, but when he started blitzing people from from Utah and 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 Nevada every play, and Todd Orlando just went mad. Bro, it was time. It was time to go. It was time to go. Like think about how opposite we went the following year with Chris Ash from from Todd Orlando. Like, think about that. We were getting wild. We were getting wild. I don't know if everybody remembers that. Uh, I, I do need to talk basketball before we drop. Um, so I know y'all saw uh, the Tyrese Hunter pick up, hook him. Clean ass commitment photo. Uh, and I think that was from IG. But um, Texas basketball, Chris Beard hitting the portal heavy again. And um, I think this is one of those 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 uh, those years with the freshmen coming in. So this is the question I have for for Chris Beard. Mitchell Morris, the younger guys, can we get can we get to a point where we're meeting these younger players halfway. And I'm just going to be real with y'all. Can we let them play with pace and can we let them run? Tyrese Hunter, now he's a proven guy. Saw what he did in the the NCAA tournament. Hitting clutch threes. Big 12 freshman of the year. He takes a lot of pressure, in my opinion, off of Marcus Carr. Marcus Carr can now really truly be off ball and just, just do what he does. You need him to score. But I'm going to need that that tempo to pick up across the board in basketball, especially since we still don't have a true big. Uh, right now, it's still going to be Christian Bishop and and DeSue. Now, DeSue should be healthier and better next year. But I really think that this is the opportunity where we can really overwhelm teams because you have – you'll always have somebody on the floor. Yes, we lose Ramey. We lose Andrew Jones. We lose uh, uh, Devin Askew. Um But this is a very talented group that can just get up and down and score. Um, I don't want to slow them down. Yeah, you want them to use use their athleticism. You're still playing the no-middle defense that Chris Beard likes to deploy um, and really getting aggressive. You're going to be more athletic on the wing with Dylan Mitchell. You're going to be really, really athletic on the wing. Paired with Timmy Allen, that's a good look, good contrast basketball-wise. But we we got to – to me, we just got to play faster next year. If we can – Pick that tempo up with the offensive talent we have 
Texas can make some noise with this group. Now we still, I, I, I'd like to see us get another big, but I don't know if that's on Chris Beard's plate or not, but pickup of Tyrese Hunter, you're hurting an Iowa State team that, that, that was really good. And he's a terrific young player, terrific guard that can, takes the pressure off of Terrio Morris, takes the pressure off of Marcus Carr. And you have people in the, you know, on your team that can just make, make shots. So from a basketball perspective, shout out to Tyrese Hunter. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Big pickup for Chris Beard. All right. So I got three minutes left because I got to go to dinner with the fam. Rapid fire. Anything else we, we need to address here? Y'all still upset about the schedule? Or are we, we, we okay with 11 a.m. kickoff now? Where, where's, where's the energy about the 11 a.m. kickoff? <laughs> Milton and Hunter bringing that five-star culture to Texas. Ain't that, ain't that right? Bringing that five-star culture to Texas. Shout out to Brees Hall. I'm going to make a Bijan video because I tweeted. I don't know if anybody – make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, at Fan Perspective. I'll put my Twitter link up here if you guys don't know. I think it's over here somewhere. Where is it? I have my Twitter link. I had a Twitter link. I don't know where the Twitter link is. But it's that fan perspective. You, 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 you all know where to find me. And um, I got into an argument with some friends about Bijan being the best running back in the country, which I believe he is. Um, and they were like, oh, man, you know, you can't take Bijan over Travion Henderson. You can't take Bijan over Braylon Allen. You can't take Bijan over Deuce Vaughn. All these people, blah, blah, blah. Um, look, the NFL agrees with me. Um, the advanced analytics agree with me in terms of, you know, what actually makes a running back special in terms of making somebody miss, breaking tackles, things of that sort. All those things agree with me. And um, got a little spicy on Twitter. Some people coming out of the woodworks, different fan bases, saying some things. So I might have to make a – y'all must have forgot Bijan Robinson – tribute video like are, have some of y'all gone mad at what this brother has done already at texas already like let's not forget he was averaging eight plus yards of carry his freshman year when the coach was trying to act like he didn't even have he wasn't even on the team sometimes let's not forget the work he was putting in before his elbow injury last year behind a suspect offensive line behind you know with one of the worst defenses everything going to shit around you and he's balling here's my thing just because we've been down and we're trying to work our way back up doesn't mean that we ain't gonna put our respect on Bijan thing that's that's not gonna happen on this channel if you're gonna reject him only because of of straight line speed per se like is he as fast as Trayvon Henderson breakaway no or a chain, no, but everything else he does at the line of scrimmage, especially running behind those type of offensive lines, it's not even close. Gray man, BJ Robinson jump cut across a 53 yard field against Oklahoma and stiff arm Billy Bowman into the ground. That was one of the best runs I've seen by anybody all year. Jump cut across the whole field with no blocking. <laughs> Man's getting hit two, two, three yards deep in the backfield. Still, still getting yards. T whole TCU defense jumped on this man's back on third down. Still giving me a first down. Man, put some respect on Bijan's name. Y'all better knock it off. Billy was a fish. <laughs> he stepped on Billy Bowman into oblivion, bro. All these guys, man. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to do, put some respect on Bijan because some of some of these people are starting to talk talk a little wild out here. And yes, I'm looking dead in the camera. Bijan Robinson, 
heading into the 2022 college football season is the best running back in college football right now. I'm not taking any anybody over him right now. There may be somebody that's a little bigger. There may be somebody that's a little faster in terms of all around running back, all around running back. Who are we starting with? I'm taking Bijan Robinson. And I don't even have to think about it. So, you know, that's just me. That's just me. Anyway, y'all hit that like button, subscribe. Touched on, uh, you know, everything I need to get off my chest here. Um, prayers to to the families in Uvalde and, and just really on my heart still. Um, but... We, we, we all have work to do in this country, in this state, all that. Um, shout out to Tyrese Hunter, come into Texas. Chris Beard getting another one. Um, thanks for hanging out with me on Happy Hour, Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully you guys have some some fun. Um, just came here just to, to, to catch up with everybody. I needed y'all today. I needed y'all today. So it's, it's a good chat, good chat. Um, other than that, like I said, if you have anything, um, specific to Uvalde where we can really help and is meaningful and impactful, please send me a DM. I would love to, to, to help and, and get involved anyway. Um, and, uh, shout out to our sponsor, BUSR, BUSR.com slash fanatic Eastern conference finals on tonight. Game six heat Celtics Celtics trying to close it out to get to the NBA finals against the Golden State Warriors, who uh, got rid of the Mavericks last night. So uh, player prop bets, everything you need over at BOSR, no better customer service out there uh, in the sports betting industry. Very reliable. Appreciate you guys so very much. And remember, horns always up. Peace.